Hello, today we'll look at the treatment of heart failure and we are checking a new medication called Neprilucine inhibitors. And this we will use a combination of angiotensin receptor blockers together with Neprilucine inhibitors. And this is a combination and this is abbreviated as ARNI. ARNI medications. Uh, we know we have dealt with angiotensin receptor blockers in uh, another video and in this case we will combine this one with this neprilucine inhibitor and the name of the specific medication is Sacubitril. Sacubitril. Uh, we know that the angiotensin receptor blockers are ending with Sartan. So we have for example Valsartan and we will combine now uh, Valsartan with this Sacubitril. So Valsartan is the specific medication of the group of medication that is called angiotensin receptor blocker and Sacubitril is the specific medication in the group of the uh, Neprilucine inhibitors. Good. And which type of doses do we have? So we will have a, a Valsartan with the Sacubitril. Okay, and we can have three, three uh, type of doses. For example, we can have 26 milligram of Valsartan together with 24. As you see, there's two, two uh, difference, 26 slash 24 milligram. Or we can have 51 Valsartan with 49 Sacubitril. Or we can have 103 Valsartan with 97 uh, Sacubitril. So as you see, the first two values had only two difference. So one was 26, 24, the other, well, the other one was 51, 49 and then we will have a six difference we will have 103 97 this is a this is a, the one which is outlier here good so once again the doses of valsartan and sacubitril is 26 24 milligram or 51 49 milligram or 103 97 milligram. Good. And when we give this medication, for example, if we have a patient who got the diagnosis of heart failure and we want to start this new type of medication uh, immediately, then we always start with the lowest dose, which is 26, 24 milligram. But if, if, we, for, if we, for example, start with an ACE inhibitor, which is the most common medication used, which is the most commonly researched medication also in heart failure, uh, then we need to start with an ACE inhibitor. And if we see that this does not work, and uh, then we can consider switching to this combination medication instead. If we see that the ACE inhibitor alone does not help. And if we have, uh, for example, a patient with a low dose of ACE inhibitor and we see that it not, does not work and we decide to switch to this uh, Sacubitril medication, then we need to give the, um, the lower dose, 26-24. If, for example, if the patient is already taking a high dose of AC inhibitor, so the target dose we call it, then we need to switch to the middle dose, which is 51, 49 milligram. Okay? And if the patient uh, then uh, gets this medication, he, we need to increase the dose until we reach the target dose, so the higher dose, 103, uh, 97. Good, and it's very important that you remember that before you start this Sacubitril medication, then you need to stop the ACE inhibitor 36 hours before. So we, we get the patient, we decide to switch. We have a patient who has uh, taken a target dose. That means we will switch to the middle dose, that is 51-49. And we stop the ACE inhibitor, we wait 36 hours, which is one and a half day. And then we start this new medication. What if the patient uh, got angiotensin receptor blockers? Because we have many types of medication. We have ACE inhibitors, we have angiotensin receptor blockers, and many patients who cannot tolerate ACE inhibitors, for example, they are coughing, they are having angioedema, or they are having any other uh, uh, side effect of ACE inhibitors, then they need to be switched to angiotensin receptor blockers. And let's say that this patient has this angiotensin receptor blocker, and now we, need to, now we want to switch to this newer type, Sacubitril, which is the combination medication. Then we don't need to stop for 36 hours. We can switch immediately. Why? Because angiotensin receptor blockers is in this combination. As I said, this is a combination of angiotensin receptor blocker together with this Neprilucine inhibitor. So 
if we already have been taking angiotensin receptor blockers, there's no need to, to, to wait. We can immediately just add this combination, which is, in fact, we just added a neprilysin inhibitor to it. Good. And the effect that this has is that it will lower the blood pressure. So the medication will lower the blood pressure. Okay. And it can also increase uh, the, it can also decrease the afterload. Afterload is the pressure that is seen after the so uh, after the heart. Therefore, it's called after afterload because the heart pumps blood to your body and it it has to pump against the pressure. And the afterload is this pressure that the heart needs to pump against. And and this neprilysin inhibitor with this valsartan can reduce that. It can also do, reduce blood pressure, as we said. And it can also, as a side effect, increase is potassium so then we can get hyperkalemia and this is actually true for all of these medications ACE inhibitors, angiotensin herpeter blockers and so on and it can also call, cause renal insufficiency so therefore as, as, uh, as with other medications it's not advisable to give high doses in those patients who have a kidney disease so please watch out good Otherwise, I think uh, this is enough. Uh, we know that ACE inhibitors uh, can cause angioedema, angiotensin receptor blockers not so commonly. And the same goes with this one. Uh, it can cause angioedema, but not as co commonly, but it can. So it's, it can be a side effect and then you need to watch out and you need to switch to another medication because angioedema is life-threatening and you can die. Good. Um, Good, and it has been seen that this medication usually is uh, uh, best for patients who have reduced ejection fraction because we can divide heart failure into two types, those with reduced ejection fraction and those with preserved ejection fraction. And it has been shown, as with the other medications also, that these medications are all best used when we deal with a reduced ejection fraction, which is a ejection fraction of less than 40%. And ejection fraction, as we know, is the fraction of blood that is pumped from the heart, uh, so from the left ventricle uh, to the rest of the body. Good. I thank you very much for listening.